Hi everyone. In Collected Works 8, The Structure and Dynamics of the Psyche, Carl Gustav Jung writes, quote, Just as we have been compelled to postulate the concept of an instinct, determining or regulating our conscious actions, so, in order to account for the uniformity and regularity of our perceptions, we must have recourse to the correlated concept of a factor determining the mode of apprehension. It is this factor which I call the archetype, or primordial image. The primordial image might suitably be described as the instinct's perception of itself, or as the self-portrait of the instinct. A quick Google or YouTube for Jung archetype yields millions of results, with the vast majority, analysed via a sample of course, being overtly psycho-reductive in their interpretation of the original idea. That is, that an archetype is, either distinctly or practically, separate from the wider biological context and can be considered in isolation of this, usually within a specialised literary analysis. However, in the quote mentioned a moment ago, Jung is absolutely clear that not only are instincts instrumental in, quote, determining or regulating our conscious actions, but additionally, the archetypes are the self-portrait of these instincts. Thus, the context does emerge, and the psychoreductionism can be put aside, so a true exegesis can be done on the implications of Jung's clinical work for human health. In line with this, in this video, you're dropped into a high-level first-year IPSA professional training seminar, where Steve and Pauline Richards were engaging in a dialectic with one of our students on the fundamental importance of instincts in clinical practice. Steve and Pauline have developed their psychosystems analysis model of depth psychology over the last 40 years, with support from many notable clinicians and individuals, including Franz Jung. Carl Jung's only son. However, Steve is clear in this clip that his view is his, and that he would encourage everyone to come to their own conclusions, in the true spirit of the dialectic. We really hope that you enjoy. The idea about archetypes being the self portraits of instincts, if we take that, then, and if you were to paint a self portrait would anybody say the self portrait is you, or would they say it's a representation of you and not you? Yeah, a representation. Yeah. So archetypes are not things in and of themselves, they are representations. What the Jungians call archetypes are not independent or separate from that which creates them. Which Jung reckoned were instincts. Well, obviously, ultimately, it's deeper than that. It's the genome. And the other, the other way to look at this, which supports it, is the idea of a dialectic between the genome and its psychological projection or projection into psychology, and then the ego pre-consciously. That's where the dialectic occurs. And then there's a resultant image. The resultant image, internally, is something usually that will resonate with the external environment, because then the ego feels connected internally and externally so it's in a harmonic resonance but that is still a version of the genome projecting into psychology via instinct to produce an image of itself which Jungians then fantasize and, and call it an archetype it's not because it's interactive it's a resultant image in effect then it is a deep structure complex not an externally generated complex, a superficial one, relatively speaking, a Jungian complex. This is different, but it is a complex because it's been created, it's new, and it's not in and of itself inherited. The instincts are, the genome definitely is, the projection which produces this interactive resultant effect is not. That is new, therefore it's a deep structure complex. And uh, that is the kind of complex that we want to encourage the genome to make, to, to cure itself of that which has been produced at the higher level by 
uh, an ego which has devolved responsibility, partitioned first of all, and devolved responsibility to a part of itself, which splits off, becomes autonomous, and tries to cap lifespan development and individuation. Now, unfortunately, if we don't help the genome to make the homeostatic adjustment necessary to push that out the way, it will just push harder. So this is the value of hypnosis because we can use that to access deep structures and then encourage the affect to act in a homeostatic way by creating the counter complex. And this is where language gets yeah. odd because Jungians would say it's an archetype. Now oh, we're in a different world now. We're in fantasy. It's not an archetype. They say oh, the archetype blow complexes away. They don't because they don't exist in the, in the way that you're talking about them. Me to the Jungians this is what I say. They don't like it, but there you go. My view is empirically that it is a deep structure complex that's been created. It has not, it is not in and of itself innate. The genome is innate, mm. but archetypes are not because they are produced by other things. And I always quote Jung. Jung said that the self portraits of instincts, the portrait is not the man. The, 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 the archetype is not the instinct, certainly not the genome. It's a projection into psychology of something else. So it's a, it's a symbol of something. And that's why I keep saying they don't exist. Stop it. You know, don't don't reify them as if they're real little people running around. It's something beautiful for sure. If you can access that, it's an incredible thing. And the emotion attached to it is wonderful. And it's transformative in the way that you mentioned about the transcendent function. But that's the true counter complex. Then it emerges from within and we just encourage it to be to be formed by opening out the natural pathways of communication and helping a person to restore homeostasis, sort of heal from within. That's, yeah, thank you. That, that's good to hear. It kind of, it just hearing you say what you just said, um, I was just uh, reminded of, I guess, my own self-analysis work I've been doing uh, throughout the course of this course. And, um, you know, my own uh, work I've done in my journal and um, my own hunches on, you know, my complexes and the origins of them and laying them out, which I think I'm like, I was, um, uh, was going in the right direction with, um, and you know, it, that gets updated over time. But what I've found or what I've been finding is I've been having dreams around the complexes, but, uh, it's much more of an emotional, um, perhaps response, uh, that power seems to power through in the dream, um, related to these complexes like uh, yeah parental you know whatever it might be um and it just it's it's a felt experience different from just i guess the cortical uh exercise around it um yeah and it, it i think it would be like in the direction of homeostasis there that, that counter complex and getting more in tune with the instincts yeah definitely hmm. archetypal images are real they're real images and they represent instinctive and genomic patterns of anticipation, anticipation teleologically for the future. They make sense if we think of them like that, but Jungians say, no, they're real. They're not. And I really would challenge any of them. I would debate any of them on that. Mm. They're, they're theoretically inconsistent internally and it does not match natural observation. So for me, it has to be wrong. I can't hold on to that belief anymore. I used to believe in archetypes. And I found I'm forcing people to accept this belief and communicating suggestion and it's not leading anywhere. I'm forgetting biology and forgetting that, you know, Jung said it's a self-regulating system. What is the psychology? Yeah. Well, what does that sit in biology and so on? So we have to try to get down to a natural understanding. And he gives it away when he says that archetypes are the self portraits of the instincts. They are created by the instincts. They are not in and of themselves things there's no archetype as such the image represents instinct just like narratives do if we watch a film if you do an instinctive analysis with a lifespan trajectory model beneath that which is the genome's teleology you understand the film immediately everybody acts instinctively around the through line the through line is the personal myth and then the collective summation of various people's personal myths then you've got it as soon as we think archetypes we've, we've lost it but no, yeah. one, no one, sorry, no one has to believe that, by the way, this, I'm just stating a position. 
and I, I, honestly i would welcome anybody to to develop their own perspective on that this is not dogma but i do have to say what my own position is mm. i think that's that's fair um but i'll accept other people's positions too obviously i would i would well, it's been helpful for me, um, the shift in perspective. I used to try to analyze my dreams years ago and try to, oh, there's a shadow and do all that. And uh, I find it's just in the past months, you know, analyzing my dreams um, and having also, I guess, the biopsychosocial model or the, the Freudian, Adlerian, Jungian model kind of to fit that analysis into um, has been hugely helpful. So. Yeah, it's been working so far for me. So thank you. Thank you. I hope. <laughs> so the other me metaphor or thought experiments of that some dreams are just the brain thinking about itself. That takes you out your ego straight away and puts you into another level. It, it collapses it differently. The brain's thinking about itself. That means it's also thinking about the ego. And, then, and if it's thinking about the ego, that means it's compensating for it. And that means you could change that resolution and see that psychodynamically is compensation but the brain doesn't exist without its genome so we get that regression back it's the genome is thinking about itself the genome is dreaming a dream of the ego now uh, that's another way i'm not saying definitely do that but it's a force experiment mm. to help to open things up a little thank you i'll try that thank you cheers you want to I was just going to uh, yeah. say that it emphasizes the importance of subcortical structures. It does, yeah. And, and that obviously is in keeping with the way that the brain itself has evolved. And yeah. it's the same with instincts, and it's the same with, um, you know, the kind of pejorative uh, ideas that people have about them that they're just animalistic. Mm. And there's a similar kind of pejorative view, I, I think, of the brain and brain structures too, that if, if somehow the processing that's going on is at a subcortical level that it must somehow be inferior yeah. to what happens uh with respect to the cortex and yet you know try and do away with it it will be completely impossible so it's just again it's just about giving things the right amount of emphasis and importance yeah. in terms of uh, how they contribute to our overall well-being yeah. and we, we've said before in the past and I, and I still think it holds true that when people have transcendent experiences when they have um, a religious experience if you like a spiritual one that that necessarily arises out of your biology it not your psychology it does. it's perceived psychologically of yes. course yeah but it doesn't emanate from there no you have a profile don't you, you which do. is biological yes. that provides the affect yes that's and without right. that there is no feeling no there's no sense of transcendence is there or no. spirituality no. so that is there it is yeah it's co-presence it is yeah doesn't mean there isn't anything spiritual it just means there is a correlation mm. but it's actually a representation and you can pick different resolutions but they're the same thing like james was saying earlier it's the same information yes but we collapse it and understand it at that level yeah. rather than another yeah, I'm getting lost in, you know, wherever that might lead you. Like, I, I was into out-of-body experiences at some point, and that just seemed like an open universe beyond our universe. Uh, but, like, just having the biology and framing it that way, kind of like, okay, there's ground to this. Like, you know, it helps. It doesn't take any of the meaning out of it. That's the thing. No. You know? No. Yeah. Like, it, it, can be, it can be a cool experience. Yes, of course. Yes. And, and it is in terms of the the way in which your psychology perceives it and experiences yes it's still profound yes of course yeah yeah it still be a cool experience for sure oh. well thank you thank you thank you Jacob. Thank you.